Welcome to the Van Life Roadmap, Barefoot Theory's free online course all about van life. Join me as I share everything I've learned over four years of living on the road so you can take off in a van you love and never look back. Hey there, welcome to the next module of the Van Life Roadmap, which is all about preparing you for your first few weeks in the van. By now, if you don't have a van already, you should be feeling confident about what you're looking for in a van conversion. We've also covered the packing and transition process and given you the tools, skills, and resources you need to prepare for the most exciting step, which is taking off for the first time in your new van. Know that the first few weeks on the road are going to be some of your toughest. How to do van life isn't just a basic instinct, and unless you already have a ton of camping and road tripping experience under your belt, it's going to take a little time to figure it out. It's absolutely okay if you stay at paid campgrounds, but the eventual goal is to get you confident off-grid so you can have more freedom and flexibility in your travels. In this module, we're going to share tips for finding all of the necessary services and amenities you'll need as a van lifer, from epic campsites to showers, internet, and drinking water. We're also going to talk about some of the challenges that come with living in a van, like managing relationships and safety. Finally, we're going to cover the principles of leave no trace, so you embark on this journey with the knowledge you need to be responsible and to minimize your impact on public lands. Before we dive into the details, the first thing I want you to do is go download the apps listed below. These are the tools I use every single day as a van lifer. With these apps, you'll become a trip planning pro and finding campsites, things to do, and amenities will be as simple as pulling out your phone. I'll be referring to some of these apps and websites throughout the rest of this module. The first thing we'll talk about when it comes to hitting the road in your van is how to find free campsites. Where do you sleep is the most common question I get. This past year, we only paid for camping about six or seven nights and usually when we needed a shower. The rest of our travels, we used a combination of apps and paper maps to find some of the most epic free campsites I've ever stayed at. But before I start, I'll let you know it wasn't always this way. My first year doing van life, I stayed at a lot of paid campgrounds, more often than not actually. Uh, the caveat here is I was traveling solo and as a new solo female van lifer, I just felt more comfortable at paid campgrounds where there are other people around. Uh, I'm going to talk more about this and safety later in the module, but also back then many of my favorite apps weren't as robust as what they are now. And in four short years, it's become a lot easier to find free campsites. So with these tools, many of the free camping areas are now a little bit busier than what they were a few years ago, but if you're traveling solo, maybe that's not such a bad thing. So you want to know what tools do I use? I basically have an easy step-by-step -step formula for finding free camping that I'm going to share here. There are, of course, many more apps available than the ones I'm going to mention in this course, but the issue with downloading too many apps is, is you end up with analysis paralysis. Instead of quickly finding a campsite, you'll spend time flipping between all the different apps and likely end up with the same result. So before I get into the details, you should also understand the different public land designations. Not all public land agencies manage dispersed camping the same. Some, like the National Park Units, offer mostly paid camping, while other agencies have a 14-day free camping limit. The BLM, or the Bureau of Land Management, and the U.S. Forest Service land are two types of public land where free camping is most easily found. Regulations vary by location, and you'll typically find signs at the start of a dirt road telling you how long you can stay there, any fire restrictions in place, and any other important information that you'll want to know. Any areas that are off-limits are also generally marked by signs. By using the simple resources that I'm going to share, you won't have to worry too much about this, but it is something that to at least be aware of. Now, here are the main tools that I use when looking for free camping in the order that I use them. So I'll go through my process and how I use each of these now. When looking for free camping, I typically start with a paper atlas. Now, if you're going on a cross-country road trip trying to hit all 50 states, it might not be feasible for you to carry paper atlases for every destination you visit. However, if you spend a majority of your time between a few different states, it's worth investing in paper maps for those areas. In rural areas, Google Maps can be unreliable, and if your service cuts out, you'll be happy you have an old-school paper map to navigate with. I personally really like benchmark atlases. Um, in my van, I carry them for almost all the western states, and I keep the state that we're currently exploring up on my dash. Every day, I look at the map, I see where we are, and I find some dirt roads that travel through public lands near the area we want to camp. This is good not just for finding campsites, but but also for finding cool roads we want to go explore. One reason I like those benchmark atlases is because they differentiate between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive dirt roads. 
And in my experience, these indicators have been pretty accurate. And when it says four by four, the road really is rough. And just having a sense of the terrain and accessibility of these different roads is a good place to start. Next, I get on the free app called iOverlander. This is an app where users submit information about the places they camped, and it's one, one of the most comprehensive crowdsourced databases I've found. Users can upload photos, a description, and other information like internet availability, along with GPS coordinates. Most of the campsites in iOverlander are free, but there are also paid campsites, and they have recently started adding other amenities like dump stations, propane fill stations, and more, more things that you can filter by. It's not the fanciest of apps, but it is my go-to. And while iOverlander doesn't officially work offline, you will still be able to see your location and nearby dispersed camping areas. You just won't be able to see the map background. If I can't find anything on iOverlander nearby, then I move to two other apps. The first is US Ultimate Public Campgrounds. It costs a few bucks and it's very comprehensive. This app includes both free and paid campgrounds operated only by public lands agencies, including local, state, and federal. It does not include pri private campgrounds or RV parks. We found everything from big dispersed camping areas to single little campsites hidden on the side of the road using that app. Offline access works the same way as it does for iOverlander. You'll be able to see your location in nearby campsites, but the map background tiles will not display. A final campsite finder app I'll mention is Allstays Camp and RV. All stays includes paid and dispersed campsites, but for dispersed, it's not as comprehensive as the previous two apps I mentioned. What I like about All Stays is that it also has other types of places you can park for free, including Walmarts, rest stops, casinos, as well as other amenities. Once you've found a spot you want to camp using one of these apps, you're going to open up Google Maps and get directions. I like to use the satellite view to zoom in and see if I can tell anything else about the campsite. For example, if there's more than one site in the area, I'll see if I can scope out which one is going to be best. If you don't have service, you can use your paper atlas or a GPS if you have one to navigate. In module two, I mentioned that I have an in-dash GPS that I installed when I converted this van. Offline navigation is one of the reasons why I did this. However, you can get by without one if you plan ahead. So this brings me to a few key points. First, finding a campsite is much easier when you are still in service. So if you know the general region you wanna stay in, do your research before you get out of cell range. Again, my preferred apps still have a little online functionality, but you can plan more with certainty when you have a signal. Second, searching for campsites is easier and less stressful during the day. If at all possible, try to get settled before it gets dark. Third, adopting a mindset that you don't have to have a perfect campsite every night will make van life a lot easier. Some nights you might be in the forest with no view or you might be parked in a big open area near a lot of other campers. If you're only camping one weekend a year, a view in solitude might be super important to you. But remember, you're going to be camping all the time in the van. Some nights you're gonna hit the jackpot, other nights your campsites might be kind of mediocre and that's okay. You can pack up in the morning and move on to somewhere better. All you really need is a flat spot with enough space and the biggest thing is that you feel safe and you aren't blatantly breaking the law. Finally, the ranger stations can be a great resource for information. If you are unsure about where you are allowed to camp, swing into a local ranger station and ask. Before we move on, I wanna quickly talk about other types of free places to park overnight. Walmarts often allow free overnight parking, but this isn't always the case. Some Walmarts prohibit overnight parking, so it's best to call or just go inside and ask. As always, you wanna obey all signs you might see. Cabela's and Cracker Barrel are two other nationwide chains that typically allow overnight parking. Casinos, truck stops, and rest stops also offer overnight parking. Usually their parking lots are well lit, which is nice for safety, and some will have a big dedicated area for big rigs and maybe even shower facilities. These can be noisy depending on their proximity to the road and the coming and going in big rigs, but if you're in a pinch or you just need a convenient place to park overnight, these are also good options. One final thing I'll mention that I don't have personal experience with yet, but is a thing called Harvest Hosts. Pricing currently starts at $79 a year and a membership allows you to park overnight for free at a variety of wineries, breweries, farms, museums, golf courses, and other attractions. Overall, finding free or low cost camping, especially if you plan on living or traveling long term in your van, will be a huge factor in helping you save money on the road. So now, if you haven't already, download and check out some of the apps I mentioned. And remember, you can always visit this lesson later if you need a refresher on my process for finding free campsites when you're ready to hit the road.